Hi, uh, my name is Dr. Siddharth Ramesh. I'm from India and the founder of Medblocks. Um, just to give you a little background, uh, I studied in med school. I found that the software that we used was really bad and wanted to do something about it. Uh, that's where my journey into this began. Uh, and at Medblocks, we've been focusing on, uh, let me share my deck. Um, so our goal, our primary goal is to build an ecosystem for plug and play healthcare applications. So it's my dream and our dream at Medblocks to be able to just uh, install apps, just like how you would uh, an Android app or an iOS app, install apps on top of a clinical data repository and just have it work. So that's the goal that we are working towards. And the uh, we, the work that we've been taking up and what we've been doing mostly for uh, US European markets, we've been building these apps on top of open EHR APIs on top of uh, fire smart on fire APIs. And for developing nations like India, South Africa, um, Bangladesh, Japan, we've, we've been deploying as well as developing apps. So we've been deploying the platform as well. And I think in our RFI, we mentioned extensively that we are huge fans of open source. We use open source, um, you know, clinical data repositories in order to run everything. So this is our expertise. So we are good at building apps. Uh, that's what we usually do for first world countries. We also deploy platforms along with these apps for third world countries and uh, where there is no EHR already in place. We want to get it right the first time. Uh, and we have much higher priority for good developer tooling over uh, low code uh, or no code tools. So the reasoning behind this is that we believe um, there will be a time when you can't distinguish these two, uh, especially with the rate at which uh, you see these large language models progressing. We are already able to push a lot of developer tooling into the hands of uh, clinicians and they're able to uh, do wonderful things with it. So at Medblocks, we do not believe in low code tools. We want to give the full power of code and we think AI will get good enough that it will become low code eventually for everybody downstream. So with that background, um, I want to first start off with uh, the product uh, the the different products that we have so first i want to uh, introduce just this small diagram so we have the clinical data repository have vendor neutral apis and you have apps on top of it i think you must be very familiar with this diagram uh, most other uh, people would have been showing you the same thing so uh, here you have the decision whether you want to build certain apps or you want to buy certain apps so you could procure an app from uh, a one of the vendors and then have it run on your um, vendor neutral API, or you can build it yourself. So Medblocks Ignite is an opinionated app. So it is a launcher app of sorts to open up and launch other apps. So when you have a clinical data repository and you uh, have a practitioner, uh, you do not want to give them 20 different URLs to open up 10 different like applications and uh, have multiple workflows. Uh, and what we also realized was uh, a lot of times common functionality was being uh, built again and again, like patient listing. Every single app that has to be run on top of the clinical data repository has to do uh, like some sort of workspace or like patient management. Uh, and we thought it didn't make sense to reinvent it again and again for every app. So Ignite is an opinionated uh, launcher, you can say. It's a launcher to launch other applications. Uh, and it works on top of uh, both a Fire API and an Open Air API. So it you can you plug and play both. It requires both a Fire as well as an Open Air API. We use Fire primarily for uh, uh, demographics, patient management, and so on, and Open Air primarily for clinical data. I would like to show you a short demo. I'm going to, again, like this is recorded by my teammates who did a good job here. But um, so this is Ignite. You log in, you have your user roles. Uh, and this is the, um, you know, this is the backstage of Ignite. Here you configure roles. You're able to configure who gets to see what. Um, 
what apps are allocated for each user. Now, here we want to show you something called a workspace. So a workspace in Ignite um, is a way to query a fire server and then return uh, patients or encounters from a fire server. It's as simple as that. Now, we are doing something called a stat, uh, just a statistic, but I will just forward a little bit and show you um, how it looks like. So now, workspace permission, again, you can have multiple of these workspaces and then assign it very granularly to uh, people. So for example, you might have one department which wants to see only patients in that particular department, and you may have another which has a different use case. Uh, now, we've configured a workspace, uh, and here immediately you can see that uh, it starts showing up. These are all the current encounters that are present, and that was just configuration. So this can be done by a super user uh, in, in your uh, terminology. So a super user will be able to configure these workspaces on a fire server using any fire query. Okay, we do not discriminate between fire queries. Any valid fire query uh, can be used to display and manage patient lists. Okay, so now here we have all of these uh, patients here. And uh, then we realized that there were a lot of other very common um, uh, requirements. So for example, you want to know uh, some data point about a patient along with the listing. So for example, uh, uh, what was their diagnosis last time? What was, uh, you know, are they on any allergy or medication? So we came up with these reusable components to put in here along with the launcher so that it can uh, make sense. So here we are installing an app. I'll come back to this later. Um, but basically the way uh, this whole thing works is you launch an encounter or a patient and then inside this, you can launch other applications. So these applications can either run through Smart on Fire, uh, which is again an embedded iframe. And we are also huge on uh, Smart on Fire slash OpenEHR. So meaning you can use Fire as well as OpenAir APIs. I will demonstrate one smart app also very soon. Um, but here you see, um, you know, this is, this is an app that was built using Metblocks UI. How this was built also, we'll get into it. Uh, but Let's say that uh, you want a particular tag. So what we call a tag is basically some data point from the clinical data repository that you want to represent for a patient. Uh, and this is also very specific to uh, users and user roles. So we do AQL here. We are, uh, you know, we are we have a U AQL template engine that's handling all of this. So once you have this AQL. Uh, this AQL basically pulls data from the clinical data repository to show it alongside um, the patient listing. So let me go to that. So here, yeah. So we've configured uh, three virtual tags in this case. One is systolic uh, blood pressure, one is diastolic blood pressure, another is diagnosis. Uh, so we found this pattern to be very common. Uh, a patient list along with data points uh, and you click on a patient and then you open up um, an app, right? So this Ignite itself is basically a launcher uh, and it launches other apps. But we added these bells and whistles so that because it's very common for these use cases to pop up. Uh, now, I'm going to uh, fast forward a little bit more and then just quickly show uh, another feature which is called widgets. Uh, so we have multiple widgets. Most of them are configurable through a web components as well. Now, these are uh, just some basic uh, chart widgets, like some line charts and some tables. Uh, you can also configure, like a super user will be able to configure widgets within Ignite. So even before they launch an app, when they're in the patient view or when they're in an encounter view, uh, they're immediately able to, to chart out a few data points uh, without touching um, code. Right, because uh, all of this is just AQL, and you're able to bring it into uh, the UI. So here we have uh, we have systolic BP and pulse rate. Uh, we have respiratory rate, uh, but that's just like touching the surface of what is possible. Because all of these are web components, you can bring in whatever you want, and you can like that's another table right there. Uh, any AQL combined with a UI component, you can have a widget based on that. Uh, so. This is Ignite itself and uh, the, you know, the workspaces and so on. Uh, I want to move next to 
Uh, connect. Okay. So Medblocks connect is again, any questions, please feel free to ask me immediately. I want this more to be a conversation uh, rather than a uh, one-sided lecture. So any questions you can stop me. I'll be more than happy to dive deeper into something if you want to. Um, okay. No questions. Okay. So Medblocks connect. Uh, let's talk about legacy data and moving data between uh, systems, right? It's one of the hardest problems in moving to a modern clinical data repository because the data is already in another database. Uh, and you more likely than not, you want to um, continue using the system and also move data into your new system, right? So this is a challenge that we face quite a bit, which is some they want to move uh, a client wants to move from uh, their old you know database, their old legacy monolithic application to an open air based clinical data repository. But their staff and uh, the technical team they are not yet fully trained on how this thing works, so they still want to use the old database and the old um, applications. So. Uh, normal ETL pipelines that happen on a batch doesn't really cut it here. So what we really need, and I think like we've generalized this for many of the places where we implemented it, uh, you need real-time data syncing between this old system and the new system if you are to go live with both at the same time. So we focused a lot of our attention on um, how can data be streamed live from any database, and most we've dealt with... Uh, MongoDB, Postgres, uh, MySQL, most of the common databases. How do you listen to this real time and then push data into uh, open air and fire data repositories so that you can go live with both systems parallelly? Okay. Uh, and again, the same, uh, the same mechanism is also being used to push data out of the clinical data repository into uh, other data formats. So this can be OMOP, this can be uh, just an analytics database on Elasticsearch or BigQuery. So both of this uses Kafka and Kafka Connect extensively. Uh, it's based on the Kafka Connect um, ecosystem. And here I have a short demo uh, just showing uh, what this looks like. So here we have dBeaver, which is just the database. This is a Postgres database on the left side. So in a real world scenario, this will be another application which is writing to Postgres. So we are just editing it directly to demonstrate how this thing works. So any data that you enter in uh, Postgres, for example, in this case, is almost in real time, uh, instantly synced back to the uh, server. So you saw Erica was entered like just now it, it uh, starts showing up in Ignite. And it doesn't matter if you use Ignite or not. It it will sync to any clinical data repository. And here we go into the details of uh, the Kafka topics and uh, you know what's happening here. But essentially, any mapping between a data source and the uh, clinical data repository, it could be OpenEHR or Fire, uh, can be represented using a simple uh, KSQL script. Uh, so KSQL is again a declarative language for um, stream processing. So we have worked on this and there is, you can declaratively represent any mapping to and from data sources um, just using uh, KSQL. And if if it's complex, then you can go and use something like Kafka Streams uh, or FOST. There are a bunch of tooling out there. Uh, but we use this to do both data transformation from uh, an old database, data transformation between OpenEHR and Fire so I'll show that also. So because the fire profiles are different based on uh, the scenario. So there might be different data mappings between an open air template and a fire, um, uh, you know, server. So we also use this for, you know, bi-directional fire to open EHR mapping and pushing data from uh, the clinical data repository out into an analytics database. Uh, and it's just a KSQL um, or, you know, a Kafka Streams application, Medblocks Connect, which is a, Kafka connector ecosystem uh, there, and it's been working pretty well for most of these use cases. Uh, now, coming to Medblocks here, yes, the thing that you've been most interested about. So I will start. Um, so there are a lot of videos on YouTube that might go into the depths if you're really interested. So I'll try to demonstrate 
what Metblocks UI really does and how you can use it. Like, so you have a clinical data modeler who um, creates a template. Uh, they throw this template at a developer. Okay, and uh, the clinical data modeler is in blue, and the developer is in uh, orange. Now, this developer can use Metblocks UI to consistently create an application that will always output a valid composition, uh, a valid OpenEHR composition. Uh, and it also does uh, some sweet things like uh, validation checks based on the web template and so on. And all of this is, uh, so it's different from, let's say, uh, form builders that other people might have demoed in that you use it in code. You do not, you don't have a low code, no, like low code uh, drag and drop interface. You bring Medblocks UI into a framework of your choice. So here uh, we are going through a very simple template. I'm just going to fast forward because uh, most of this is probably familiar to you. So we have a template which has all of these archetypes, body weight, uh, service request, problem diagnosis, and so on. Uh, so let's uh, see how you would actually code using this. So all you need is a web template. So we can export that from most archetype, uh, I mean, most template designers. Uh, you can also, you know, most clinical data repositories also support the web template format these days. So you can also get it from the CDR directly. Uh, you install Metblocks UI, and this is a, this is a normal front-end application that's using uh, Preact uh, and uh, Tailwind CSS, and we have a bunch of dependencies installed. So uh, we are installing Metblocks UI, and after this, all you need to do is, um, so again, I'm going to fast forward here a little bit. It's just installing Metblocks UI. Um, you have an app like you would uh, in any other application. It's And here again, we are using React uh, use effect to do a bunch of um, you know event handling. And once you have the base uh, outline of an application, so we've imported Metblocks UI, we have all of this set up. Um, you also have the VS Code extension for Metblocks UI. Okay, so that's that's where it becomes more of a, a form builder. Uh, so let's, uh, this is just like example components. This is a template uh, for Preact, but uh, let's, I'm just gonna wait for the video to go forward a little bit. Yeah, so we are running the server here, and this is a very basic form uh, in which we've hard coded a bunch of uh, inputs. So we have an input, we have an input multiple, and we have a search. Okay, and all of this was just uh, coded by the developer, right? But then now we have this um, web template, right? So we download this web template and we put it in a folder in the same uh, repository. And again, this application was called Tactum, so we are putting that in. Um, we have the web template now. Now we have a Medblocks UI VS Code extension. Uh, this also works with most other uh, VS Code style IDs. Uh, and you can see that uh, it shows up a tree structure on the left side, okay? Uh, now this will render all of the data points that are there in the, um, in the template that was designed by the clinical data modeler. Okay. Uh, and it will show a circle and a dot if it's mandatory. It will just show a circle if it's not mandatory. And it will show a double check if uh, it's present in the current uh, app. Okay. So we are just going to do a copy paste of all the components right now. So as soon as we paste all of that, again, this is a feature of the Medblocks VS Code extension. You just, you can copy paste. Uh, the default representations of these uh, components. So you can see that all of the data points from um, the template show up with the default uh, mappings and the, with the default units, um, so on. So this is the first step in building a, an application. We don't think that you can just copy paste and then uh, call it, it, you could, it will still work. Uh, you can still submit a form and it will capture data. Uh, but most of the times we found that clinical apps are more complex than we think, and uh, the clinician would like something uh, nicer than just a form that renders on your uh, face. So 
uh, things like conditional rendering, things like, uh, you know, if they enter this, then do that. So all of that can be represented in um, application code. So you have the full power of JavaScript and you have the full power of uh, whatever framework you're using. Uh, it could be Vue, it could be Angular, it could be React, Preact, whatever you use, you can use the power of your own framework of choice and just bring in uh, these input elements for um, um, capturing the data points. Uh, the other thing is that styling is completely up to you. You can style it any way you like. You can uh, put it in two tables. You can put it in like four different columns. Uh, it's CSS. So you can style it any way you like. Uh, you can interact with it any way you like. Uh, you can have custom uh, you know, interactions. Like for example, this is validation. So form validation uh, happened right there. That, you know, it, it automatically defaults to certain validation data point. So this is a flat template. I, I mean, this is a flat composition that you see on the left side. So we are not posting it to an open air data repository. We're just console logging it in this case. But um, most of the clinical data repositories today support the simplified data formats. Yes. Yes, I think we have a question. Erik, uh, you wrote something in the chat. Should we take it right I away? Think we take that afterwards because that was okay. about Medbox Connect. So go okay. on. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Medblocks Connect. We'll come to it later. Okay. So uh, Medblocks UI, you uh, this outputs a flat composition. Okay. And most of uh, the CDR support flat. It's becoming part of the REST RESTful, you know, OpenHR REST standard as well. So most CDRs will support flat. Uh, and that's the basic, you know, like how Medblocks UI works. Now I will show you another application, the same application. Um, okay. So the same application has now been refactored and made into um, modular components. So nothing stops you from making this into an actual like application, right? So this is a much more complicated uh, layout to the one you saw. So we have multiple um, we, we React components here. We have lab results, we have procedures, medications. You can separate these out into your own uh, component. You can have your own logic there. It can pull from any um, terminology. It can pull from SNOMED CD. It can pull from um, uh, ICD-10. It can pull from Loink. It's it's up to you. You can you can configure it to work with any terminology plugin. It could even be your internal uh, codes. So I'll just show you how uh, this looks. So we have the Medblocks form and we have all of the components inside that. Um, so I'm just gonna skip the code a little bit and then show you how this looks like. Yeah, so here you see that uh, we've gone in and done a lot more CSS, uh, a little bit more styling to put the weight and height in a single section, the vitals in a single section, lab results, and so on. Um, I want to see if there is a demo of the search feature. Let's see. So most of these are what you would expect. Uh, let's see if NB search is being demonstrated. Ah, there we go. Yeah, so lab results, this is coming from SNOMED CD. So this uh, is automatically in Medblocks here you have multiple uh, components that handle search. So this is coming from SNOMED CD. Uh, they, if you want to capture lab results with SNOMED CD, you can, uh, and you, you can have more fine-grained filters that the end user can select or deselect. Okay. Uh, so here we are going with CBC, hemoglobin, uh, some result. Uh, so again, uh, this is, uh, again, SNOMED city, but medication, I believe. So if you're interested, I can show you in the code how that looks like, or else I will just move to the uh, next, uh, and also repeatable. So you can, it's just, again, Medblocks UI is just helper components that enhance your normal React or Preact or uh, Vue or Angular app. So you can do whatever you can with that, with Medblocks UI. So you can chart whatever you want. There is no limitation as to what is allowed and what is not allowed. So um, I get this question a lot, like are charts allowed, are tables allowed? Yes, 
if, if you can code it, you can uh, put it in your app. So again, this is outputting the same composition here again, again, a valid open EHR composition, uh, much more, uh, you know, well styled. I wouldn't say well, like at least it's decently styled. So that is Medblock's UI. Uh, now, next I want to go into how the app that was just developed in Medblock's UI can be installed in Ignite. Um, so before that, I think I'll take uh, Eric's uh, question. So Eric, your question is regarding Medblock's connect export out from CDR. Did you say you use KSQL for that too? Is AQL involved somehow or do you specify what to extract from the open engine? Yes, so it's a very good question. Uh, so what we do is currently in open EHR, there is no specific standard for um, this sort of a data export. And I know that a lot of work is being done here, uh, but what we do right now is we have a separate topic that outputs every single uh, composition as they change. So every single open air composition as they change will be uh, coming on a particular topic. And using KSQL, you can use an AQL path. So it's possible to use an AQL path. It is also possible to use a flat path. Uh, so it it's mostly you're selecting something out of a composition. So you can use AQL paths, you can use flat paths, you can even use the uh, open air SDK or Archie uh, if you are building a more sophisticated uh, Kafka streams application rather than just KSQL. But in KSQL, there are uh, there is options for user-defined functions and we have worked on a few user-defined functions that can um, extract, for example, given an AQL path, extract that data point or all the data points from a particular composition. So, so you set something up in uh, listening to that Kafka topic that then uses those functions. Okay, thanks. Yes. yes. So any other questions on Medblock's UI? Uh, yes, in Medblock's UI, is it possible to display and or edit, create a new version of a document, which, yes, absolutely. We do this all the time. Uh, so there is a, uh, so most of the time there are some templates and compositions that you would like to consider uh, persistent and you want only one copy of a particular uh, document, right? Maybe uh, at the current medication list of a person or an allergy list. You do not want multiple copies of the same template. So you can pull back the same, uh, again, Metblocks you can also bind back data from a composition. So the form can automatically bind back the uh, existing composition. It will show all the values as it is, and you will be able to edit that and then save it again. But when you save it, your framework needs to make the conscious decision to put rather than post again. And it should put on the same URL or the same UUID um, that was previously generated. That's it. So Medblock's UI's abstraction layer is just uh, UI elements and a valid OpenEHR uh, flat composition. Uh, you give it back an OpenEHR flat composition, it can bind back to the UI elements and it can show you um, these data points. So does that answer your question, uh, Joshua? All right. Uh, any other questions for Medblock's UI, uh, the front end? All right. Uh, the, there is, uh, I think you've talked about it in, in other contexts. Uh, sometimes you want to bring up a, a composition that you might not have a form for that comes from somewhere else, uh, just displaying. Uh, so I think you said that you were working on something like that. What does the time plan for that look like? Right, right, right. So a generic form renderer or a generic, you know, composition generic renderer. Composition renderer, yeah. Yes. Uh, we are still working on it, but we are uh, we, we are seeing more and more that uh, large language models like ChatGPT are able to display them much better than uh, tooling that we are using. So we are working on it, but parallelly, we are also exploring other ways of representing a composition as natural text. Uh, what is present in this composition? What are all uh, you know the elements there? So the timeline, 
we would not like to you know promise anything uh, but it would probably be around one to two months we might have a generic uh, composition renderer uh, as, as part of uh, medblocks ui thanks okay so now I'm going to go into the next uh, small part of this. So we have a lot of smart on fire apps today. Uh, in fact, if you take a look at the smart app gallery, uh, there are a bunch of apps that you can try now and you can use it and you can, um, uh, you know, it runs unfortunately on top of fire APIs. So mostly they're on, on top of, uh, you know, DSTU2, US core uh, fire profiles. Uh, but most of these well, apps are still valuable, right? Uh, and they do something that a clinician may want. Uh, and here we are, I'm first going to show how uh, easy it is to embed a particular uh, app that you develop with Ignite. So here we are going to first install the application that was just developed uh, using uh, Preact, uh, using Medblocks UI. And we are just calling it my new app. And uh, I'm just going to forward, I mean, forward this a little bit. So the main uh, thing to note here is you mentioned which view you want to represent this in. So, there are both the patient as well as an encounter view. A patient view can be, excuse me. So an encounter view is when you go into a visit, into a specific visit, and an encounter view and a patient view is when you just want to generally look at a patient. Uh, and Smart on Fire apps already have this concept called uh, launch context. So when you launch an app from the EHR, uh, you can pass in the patient parameter and the encounter parameter and uh, the smart on fire app can identify uh, what to display, right? So it will display information specific to that encounter or that patient. Uh, now we use the same concept here with open EHR apps as well. The same uh, app we developed with uh, Medblocks UI uh, now is in Ignite. Uh, it's embedded in Ignite and you can enter data uh, and it, gets the full uh, patient context. Uh, okay, sorry. I am, I skipped that part. Okay. Uh, yeah. So now uh, I'm showing you another app, which is pain management. This is a smart on fire app that is on the smart on fire health IT gallery. And we are launching it on the same patient. So now you see that uh, this smart on fire app is actually running within Ignite. Uh, it's running in the context of uh, William Lara, uh, which is a dummy patient. And this current patient is does not have any criteria that will open up this pain management application, but I'll just show you the uh, how the fire uh, resources and the medication requests and the conditions look like. So you can see um, all of this data here, the, uh, the, the fire patient um, and uh, I'll come next to the more clinical resources as well. Uh, the medication request, for example. So there is nothing here. Uh, condition, we have uh, some, some condition. But you can sync this from an open EHR uh, problem diagnosis, for example. And a problem diagnosis archetype can represent a view in the fire server and have corresponding fire resources um, be sent to a fire server. And using that, you can launch existing smart on fire applications on top of um, your data. You don't need to recreate anything. Uh, and in this case, again, like I uh, think there was a section where uh, it showed the scopes. Yeah. So uh, again, this whole launch process is part of the smart on fire specification. Um, you, the practitioner who is launching this app allows or denies whether a particular um, uh, you know, permission for this app is given. So in this case, we are allowing the app to read anything that belongs to the patient. So that way it was able to read all the medication requests and the conditions and the observations and so on. Uh, and uh, you can see that the app within itself also displays a patient banner, maybe for safety reasons. 
but I think this app doesn't really respect the use patient banner uh, parameter of smart on fire. Uh, so uh, that is, yeah, that's that's a smart on fire application running on uh, Ignite. I'm just gonna go, yeah, that's uh, this uh, the demonstration of the fire resources that are present. Uh, and previously the other app was one that was completely built using Medblock CUI. You can integrate all of these uh, together and it will both work on the same uh, clinical data repository. Okay. Uh, and this is the app that we used, the CDS Connect Pain Management Summary. I'm not sure who it was. I think it was, yeah, developed by MIT Ari. And uh, we did not make any changes to the code base. In fact, we didn't even, we didn't not even touch the code base. We used the same URL as the Smart On Fire Health IT launch um, sandbox, and it worked with Ignite. Uh, so, yes. Any other questions before? Uh... So you got one, I think, in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. From Eric. Yes. Uh, is there any specific Medblock support for creating fire views of open air CDR content to use existing smart? Okay. So Ignite supports launching smart on fire applications out of the box, but the mapping of open air templates and archetypes into the clinical uh, into clinical fire resources still has to be done. Uh, using a bunch of, uh, you know, KSQL, Medblocks Connect, or some sort of an integration script that's running. Um, the reason is because some smart on fire apps rely on US core, for example, US uh, core fire profiles, but some don't. Some uh, use the local regional fire profiles. They may expect data in a certain format. So, Depending on the smart on fire apps that you want to use and the profiles that a government is going to enforce, uh, the uh, the mapping is still very much a manual effort. It unfortunately is not automatic at the moment. Uh, for creating fire views, is is that what you're asking, Eric? Yes. Uh, so it was. Just like you had some help in making UI things uh, to make it easier for. I understand that you need to have a manual uh, uh, hack to get it doing, but is there something to support to make that manual hacking easier? Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, we just uh, throw a lot of case equal at it until yeah. it, it works. Yeah. yeah. I think we had, we had a pre-collected question also should we take that one before we stop recording yeah, uh, yeah sure um, and it's from i think it's from region skåne uh, so i just read out loud and and someone from skåne will ha have to ha help me out uh, it's about api security policy decision engine that is mentioned in the rfi have you yeah. done pre-configured policies for the different APIs? And do you classify the APIs? Uh, that is security classification. Got it, got it. Okay, so we, yeah, I didn't demo that at all in this RFI, but um, so we use uh, open policy agent and we do have a bunch of uh, predefined policies. So these can be uh, policies like, um, you know, you only allow a certain template for specific users. They are only able to view or uh, edit or write certain templates to the open air CDR. But we do all of this at the level of HTTP REST. Uh, we have nothing specific in the clinical data repository itself that we use. It's happening one level above that. So, uh, the API classification, I probably need a little bit more clarification on what you mean there, but uh, the policies, we have a bunch of default policies, but most of these can be customized depending on your requirements. Uh, so if maybe you're not very big on uh, template-based role control uh, and you instead want, um, I don't know, like time-based role control, like the, you can only have people open up a specific data point when the patient is at their office. That's still very much possible using the same, you know, REST-based API 
control on top of the CDR. So this will work even if you use another CDR. You don't need to use, uh, for example, we go with our default is Airbase, uh, the open source uh, version, but you can go with uh, DIPS, you can go with Better, you can go with any CDR and you'll still be able to use the policy engine on top uh, because it re relies only on HTTP REST. You won, perhaps, Olian. You're from Skåne. Are, are you happy with that answer, or do you want to say something more? Yeah. Thank you. It was I think. Me. It, I think it's Pia. Yeah. Pia, yeah, okay. Pia, yeah. then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand a bit here, but um, uh, from an enterprise level, uh, do you also have something you can see uh, unexpected patterns in the API and? Uh, you, Deni deuce, denial of service attacks, uh, such things. Uh, do you support anything on those? Got it, got it, got it. Yes. So denial of, so, so we can probably talk about rate limiting specific APIs based on uh, certain tags, right? So you have options to, for example, uh, you know, you can tag the geo IP of the HTTP request coming in and you will be able to a rate limit in case so many I mean, like multiple requests come from a specific person but i would still uh, if you have something like a ddos attack which is like coming from multiple ips across the world you probably have to use something like uh, cloudflare or uh, you know another firewall in front of this authorization uh, mechanism i wouldn't bank my entire DDoS protection on a, a policy engine, right? You can just do things like IP-based blocking and you can do things like uh, rate limiting, uh, but it's there is a lot more that goes into uh, these more complex uh, DDoS attacks. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say like, don't depend on this for DDoS protection. No, okay, I understand, thanks. Are there any other questions before we turn off the recording? Yeah, there is um, some, uh, or, or many are using attribute-based access control, ABAC. Uh, and uh, in open air cases, you could be interested in having sources for these attributes of different kinds, for example, something that is in the composition or in a tag or something coming from the HTTP request or a ticket in the request and things like that. Have you right. experimented with that together with Medblocks? Right, right. So so we, uh, you have the option to, when I talk about HTTP REST-based authorization, you also have the option to look at the request body and the response. So in case there is some data in the response that you think is not, uh, meant to be seen you can still block it after the response comes back from the cdr uh, and attribute based uh, access control again is just one type of we can implement that using open policy uh, agent trivially using rego uh, it's again you can fine tune it using the policy language uh, to your requirements you do not need to stick to something like a back or r back or uh, you know one of these uh, boxes you can have both you can have a little of a back and you can have a, a lot of uh, r back for example you can you can do both um, but coming to that i also want to um, talk about a limitation of this so since we do not do uh, at the cdr level we do not have much control and most of the times we are not deploying our own cdrs we are deploying either open source uh, ehr base or we are deploying somebody else's cdr underneath um, the there can be instances where you want to redact or limit the response being sent. Uh, for example, if somebody is doing AQL, you only want the AQL results uh, of what they have access to. That is currently not possible with this approach. You can it's it's a yes or no kind of a gateway. You either have access or you don't. You can't modify the uh, response in a significant way. But but if we, for example, would uh, hire the, the MedBlocks team to work with Airbase, could uh, things like these be configured 
then oh yeah de definitely definitely i think airbase already has plugins for doing this but we also want to keep in mind that airbase may not be the default cdr of choice uh, yeah. there may be something else that needs to also support uh, this yeah but, but the, it's interesting to know if you have experience of uh, experimenting with these things over running that's right. thanks right. for the